The year was 1963. Newly married John and Michelle Phillips had their first autumn in New York City. John stole a hot plate to heat their bologna and mayonnaise. It snowed overnight and in the morning Michelle didn't know what the white stuff coming out of the sky was, because it never snowed in southern L.A. She and John went for a walk Michelle didn't have the clothes or shoes for it. She had tennis shoe socks, a tank top and jeans. John had a chinchilla fur hat. It was bitter cold. She and John stopped into St. Patrick's Cathedral to get her warm. Her years in Mexico had given her an affection for Catholic churches. John's family were in the Marine Corps. He had been sent off to Catholic military school when he was just seven years old. He went to Annapolis and he was anxious to break out of that military, Catholic schooling that he had. He just wanted to play guitar and be hip. John was one of the few folk singers in Greenwich Village writing his own songs in the very early 60s. In the room in the Hotel Earl right on Washington Square, he dreamed about the song and woke her up to help him write it. It was a song about longing to be in another place, and it was inspired by Michelle's homesickness. John said a verse all the leaves are brown slash and the sky is gray slash I've been for a walk on a winter's day. John woke Michelle up and said, Help me write this. Michelle groggily muttered tomorrow. No, he said. Help me now. You'll thank me for this someday. Michelle wrote the second verse stopped into a church I passed along the way slash well, I got down on my knees and I began to pray. She's never regretted getting up and writing it down. Since she gets half of the writing credit of the song for it. He didn't like the religiosity of the second verse, Michelle Phillips told Spinner in 2012. He told her that he didn't want religion in churches, so she said they will rewrite it. However, when the others heard the second verse they wanted to keep it. Glad we did, she said. California Dreamin' was first recorded by Barry Maguire. You can hear Cass Elliott and Michelle Phillips doing the backing vocals on the original version released as a single in 1965. However, the best-known version is by the Mamas and the Papas made of John and Michelle Phillips, Danny Doherty, and Cass Elliott. They blended and harmonized their tenor, baritone, soprano, and contralto voices for hours to create overtones that sound like a fifth voice, which they nicknamed Harvey. Harvey showed up. No. Not the big invisible rabbit, explained Doherty. Harvey was an overtone, a fifth voice that was created when the four of us sang together and it all worked. It wasn't folk music anymore, man. At long last it was really and truly rock and roll. Orchestration took their singing and harmonies to another more complex and ornamental level. But the mamas and papas were doomed from the start. Michelle started flirting with Denny as early as New York which later turned into an affair. In 1966 came songs I saw her again and I got a feeling. Denny shared the credit. John said they both knew what they were writing about but just wouldn't he admit it. Cass Elliott in the 1970s, when you haven't had a record out in two years and people come up to you on the street and in luncheonettes and at gas stations and they say I can't tell you how much your music has meant to me, I mean that's real. I mean can you imagine the feeling that you get to know that you did something that you dug and that other people dug it so much that they still remember it. And it's only since I really left the group that I realized what a fixture the mamas and papas are. Growing up in L.A. in the 60s, how could I not identify with the song called California Dreamin'? The intensity with which the mamas and the papas got down on their knees and began to pray always got to me. And it still does. Plus, it is probably the greatest song ever to pose an existential choice between love and warm weather. David Lang, Pulitzer Prize winning composer. Near the end of Straight Shooter, which was made in 1988, John Phillips is a happy man. He had co-penned the Beach Boys' big comeback hit Kokomo, and it had gone to number one. It was 20 years after his first number one, Monday, Monday. He joked that in another 20 years, he would be due for his third. And he has just been given an ASCAP award for California Dreamin', which causes his gathering friends to break into the song impromptu, with Paul Schaefer pounding out the tune on the piano. 
It's one of the most joyous moments I've seen on screen in quite some time. Said Michael Jacobson in his review. In that room full of people singing that song, it is difficult to tell if they are singing the lyric, began to pray, pretend to pray, or either. Michelle Phillips talks about the confusion about the lyrics. We were on the road after the song was a hit, and I was a doing a sound check with Cass, and I sang the lyric, and I began to pray. She looked at me and said, "Wait, what did you say? I thought the lyric was I pretend to pray. That's how she had been singing it all along." Is it the mamas and papas, as Cass said in her quote, or the mamas and the papas, as it appears on album covers? How do you spell mama? Are there two MMS in the middle? Is it a case of missing or added time? In one reality, Michelle was too groggy and didn't take as much time to make her full contribution. And correct tense because pretend isn't even grammatically correct. It would be pretended to pray, which just doesn't work. In another reality, John rewrote the lyric the way that pleased him. Did John Phillips, in a case of retrocausality, rewrite the lyric from "began to pray" to "pretend to pray"? In 2016, the song shifted due to the Mandela effect. Many people experienced the video of California Dreamin' at the Hollywood Palace 1966 change. People who always remembered the lyric "began to pray" saw it switch to "pretend to pray." In a period of isolation, there were times when Danny Doherty stepped forward for his solo, saying "pretend," while the backup vocals still said "began." The reverse was also true. There were times when you couldn't tell what the word was. There were times when Danny Doherty's lips said one while the audio was the other. There were times when it sounded like "began," which is phonetically between "began" and "pretend." It eventually settled from "began" to "pretend." One of the more misheard lyrics comes in the second verse of this song. Songfacts.com, as you know, the preacher likes the cold is often mistaken as the preacher lights the coals. I was riding swans along that ilk," said John, and then we all had to sing them. You see, that was my revenge. He laughed.